welcome back to uh, Car Chat episode number two. <laughs> so we did our first one yesterday and had a decent little response and, and some guys were uh, happy to get the information. So we're just going to keep it going as long as people are engaged. Um, and uh, we had a question yesterday about our handlebars, uh, our one-piece superbike handlebars that we run. Um, and that kind of ties into the fork conversation that was at the end of yesterday's chat, actually. Um, you know, one of the things we're doing when we redo the forks is we're trying to balance spring center. And all that means is that the force of the axle uh, is whatever force it takes to move the axle, a unit of measurement, a millimeter, an inch, or whatever, is matched up fairly evenly front to rear. Um, so the bike, when you are going over bumps or in a corner on the edge of the tire and hitting bumps, that the bike works together uh, front and rear. If you've got an imbalance spring center, one end will be doing one thing and the other is doing something else, and it just starts feeling like a buck and barrel, and it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't feel good at all. Balancing your spring center is probably the number one best way to create a bike that handles really good. Um, you know, that's the spring rate, uh, getting the right spring rate to where you have a balanced spring center is the first step. And then what we talked about, about preload and things like that, how much energy is at the top of the stroke, that's also going to affect, based on the rate you're on, how much travel you're going to use, where you're going to be at in the stroke when you're geeing out through corners and things like that. But that's a whole lot of information for a much more in-depth uh, tutorial on suspension tuning. Um, but anyway, so the, when we when we do, redo the forks, we're, we do some things to increase the damping effect, uh, both compression and rebound. Um, and we concentrate on getting a spring in there that gives you close to a, a decent balance spring center. And, and it is, does have a bias. Uh, it's not a perfect balance because um, the ZRX has a rearward weight bias that is unfavorable. And so to kind of balance that out, we create a bias in the spring center balance to kind of create an artificial balance or, well, a, a dynamic balance, I guess, a real world balance, because you've got more weight working on the rear end than you do on the front end when you're riding the bike and flipping it through corners. Um, so if you scaled this bike, and this is going to lead into the handlebars, if you scaled the ZRX, what you'd find is that there's much, there's more weight over the rear axle than there is the front, uh, considerably more. And so when we set up a road race bike, like a modern road racer, when you, when you scale the bike alone, you're typically looking for a, a, a balance of 53% over the front axle, 47% over the rear axle. And then when you put the rider on the bike because of their body position, that will typically give you a balanced weight distribution over both axles. You get a 50, 50. And that's what we're looking for. That gives us the best, you know, the best handling and, and um, so there's another portion to this equation. Just the equation. So it's a, the, the bike is what it is. There's the weight is where it is. To some extent, a lot of that can't be changed. On um, a lot of race bikes, we've added lead, you know, to different parts of the bike. Even though it put us over weight limits, it created a better spring balance, or spring center balance, and gave us a much better handling bike. Uh, the biggest thing when you are on a bike like the Kawasaki where you have a rear weight bias is you got to get weight transferring in order to create grip. Axle force is what creates grip. So you want to drive your axle into the ground whether you're braking or whether you're accelerating. You want those axles being driven into the ground. Um, so when you have a, a severe rearward weight bias or if the weight's too low on rear weight bias, like on a Ducati, uh, well, the older ones, the 1098, 1198, 848, stuff like that. Um, when you go to the brakes, instead of weight rotating over and driving the triple clamp down again into the forks, which pushes the axle and the front tire into the ground, that weight stays low and it actually pushes from behind uh, and, and, and gives you front end push and tuck and things like that. 
So the ZRX has a similar characteristic. So what we try to do is, is get weight coming over the top and driving the axle into the ground. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Raising your CG helps with it. Um, uh, but one of the easiest ways to do it is to reposition your body. The rider weight is a huge portion of the weight of the bike uh, percentage wise. And so if you can move a rider's weight forward, um, you can actually create more front end grip, better steering, things like that. And so this leads into the handlebar. So by, by moving your four hands uh, forward a little bit because the drawback on the bar is different and moving your hands down, it pulls your body up over the tank more. So instead of sitting more upright, you're now moving forward. The reason we chose these bars, one, they're very comfortable, but and they give you a lot of leverage. They're a little wider and they don't have, they have very mild drawbacks. So the stock bar is drawn back like a, a garden plow. We absolutely hate them. Um, but, and that gets you sitting real upright too. Um, and so it hurts weight transfer. Uh, so we probably tried a dozen different handlebars before we came up with this one or found this one and we really love it. And it's become our, uh, our go-to one piece bar when we build a ZRX. The other thing we do, because you're moving forward, you're bending at the hips and creating it, it, it can, it, one of the things that helps rotate your whole body forward is to actually move your feet back a little bit. So on both our street rear sets and our race rear sets, your feet are going back and slightly up to create more ground clearance in the corner. But it, what it does is it rotates your whole body forward on the bike. And so dynamically when you're riding the thing, well, and statically, if you, if you scaled it with a rider and changed their body position like that, you'd see on the scales, the actual weight distribution over the axles is changing. Uh, coming back in our favor from that unfavorable rearward, rearward bias. Um, so anyway, that's the handlebar. Uh, the reason we run the handlebars we do and, 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 uh, and we do recommend uh, running an aftermarket rear set. Obviously we build one, so we prefer you bought it, but um, there are a lot, of, a lot of companies building rear sets out there. Um, but that, that those two things work together and will actually improve the handling characteristics of your bike uh, dramatically, um, especially when you get the, the front spring in the right position um, or in, in the right range of force and preload and all those things. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too much, uh, but basically our handlebar, the takeaway is the ZRX needs a heavier, stiffer front spring. It needs to have the amount of preload that's installed on it corrected. It does benefit from heavier oil because it increases damping effect. Um, and moving your body position to help the weight bias of the overall package is, uh, is a huge benefit. Um, and then also being comfortable on the bike so we try to we tried to accomplish a bunch of that as much of that as we could uh, through just doing the bar and the rear sets um, so typically when we mount these bars we are usually upgrading other things to brake lines master cylinders uh, our fairing reload kit the drop you know drops and moves the fairing forward and drops it down there are um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I don't know that we've ever done it, but I'm pretty sure you can run the bars without changing anything else, even though we almost always do. Uh, I think it'll work with everything, you know, cable length and brake line length and, and all that stuff uh, doesn't have to be modified in order to, uh, in order to run these bars. They're just a, pretty much a plug and play application. Anyway, I hope that helps uh, and uh, kind of gives a little method to our madness um, we really don't do anything just to do it uh, there's we, there's a reason between it or behind every part that we develop and everything we do and it, it's we try to find a blend between form and function but there are very very few things that don't have some that aren't function driven for us uh, that's our 
that's our primary focus when we're developing these bikes. But anyway, uh, hope that helps. Hope you guys have a great Sunday. If you're out riding, uh, I'm jealous. I hope you have a great ride. Keep the shiny side up, and uh, we'll see you next time.